Boom to the hey, all you sports fans out there in the two-mosphere, to you, the individuals, part of this collective. Welcome to the OMSR. I am your brief but very concise host, Will the Alternative Eastman, Sports Thrill. Doing the mid-major reviews that time of year. Automatic bid to the big, big dance. So all the snapshots roll by, the video how it's coming up. Just a little explanation here. Patriot League, as I said, saw from Dwayne. Darn that ultimate sports fan, almost our mascot. And if you the pie cap out of the house, sweetheart, you review chapter Alpha Tau, giving you props. Five years, 20 quarters straight, never an incident in any of the fraternities there. At the U on Greek Row. Been part of the OMSR shtick from the beginning. College sports, a little bit of the college life. Not going to portray them as cheerleaders. All right. American and Lafayette. Not a rematch from last year. A lot of these mid-majors been covering have been rematches. This is a key play there at the end. Definitely you can see, you know, like a big man might let a little guard beat him by, but would definitely be able to block that shot. Difference in talent in some of these leagues sometimes. All right, and then after, a little discussion about, you know, can we have some criteria, please, for who gets a 16, who gets a 1, because it seems to keep changing every year. And it's yet another example of Jay Billis and, yours truly, Will the Thrill, they could exactly alike in the sense of this context, you should have a basketball background. You know, like for example, when I saw Condoleezza Rice on the committee for football, it's like, what? Okay, fine, you went to Stanford, but you know what I'm saying? So yeah, on that cookie sport rant, we'll end on that note. You'll never see the old Massar pretend to know anything about hockey. That's why I never cover IHL or NHL. All right, so that's coming up. Patriot League, good game. Gives you a little feel for when you're filling out your bracket, more so than if you even saw the highlights, but you may have missed it. All right, thanks for watching. Those silly DUIs while you're out there. Remind me of sports and alcohol. They are joined at the hip. Cool. Bracket Week on CBS Sports Network, presented by Kubota. And history in the making of the Patriot League. For the first time in the 25-year history of this league tournament, the top seed failing to make the final. Fourth-seeded Lafayette upsetting top-seeded Bucknell on the road, while sixth-seeded American is here as well, looking to defend its league title from the Kirby Sports Center in Easton, Pennsylvania. It is the Patriot League Championship. Hi there, Jason F. here. So glad to have you with us alongside the former team captain in Army and former Duke assistant coach Chris Matola. And Chris, in a one-bid league, this is the one you dream about. This is why you put in all the work. Right here, you got a packed house. You're playing to go to the NCAA tournament. You're 40 minutes away. It's what all that work during the summer is for all season long. 40 minutes away, you just got to make it happen. We talked about two low seeds, the four seed and the six seed, Lafayette winning at both now. There, finished the game with 21. Such a load inside, but it was their sophomore guard, Nick Lindner, who really sealed the game from deep, took it to the basket. Lafayette won going away, and then up in Hamilton, American University did it with a host of guys. Here, Marco Vosic taking it to the glass. John Schoaf on the poke away, ahead to Vosic. There's Pee Wee Gardner, John Schoaf, Jesse Reed from long range. This American team was up 17 at the half. Also one going away. Both these teams, Jason, won their games to get here on the road. Lafayette home tonight. American in this game for the second year in a row. I'm looking forward to it. It should be a blast. Both of these teams trying to get to the NCAA tournament for the fourth time in their program's history. American for the second year in a row. Lafayette for the first time since 2000. Here on campus at Lafayette in Easton, Pennsylvania. That's what they're playing for. The Patriot League Tournament Championship Trophy and the automatic bid to the NCAA Tournament that goes with it. American looking to put its name on it for the second consecutive year. AU winning on the road last season at Boston University. Trying to go back to back and get it done on the road again here at Lafayette. Take a look at the starting lineups brought to you by Kubota. For American, the starting five, you'll see them a lot. Darius P. Wee Gardner, Jesse Reed, John Show on the top 12 in minutes played in the nation. And for Lafayette, a trio of seniors in the first five, plus sophomore point guard Nick Lindner, who had 23 points in both the quarterfinal and semifinal rounds. Got to go difference makers for this game, and John Show is going to go down as one of the best players.
years in AU history. 125th career start for him. That's most ever for an Eagles player. Once just simply a great three-point shooter, his game evolving into a complete all-around player and leader. Same can be said for another senior in Dan Trist, the 6'9 player from Australia, a unanimous first-team All-Patriot League selection. Top scorer in the league this year and came through with a great 21-point performance in the semifinal against Bucknell. Chris Spatola is back courtside, ready to settle in for this one. And Chris, the contrast of styles here will be something to watch. They go about it very differently. Well, tempo is big, right? You know, American wants to control the tempo with their offense and their defense. Important for Lafayette to get this thing at their pace early. Because if you don't, this game can slide in the 50s, 60s, which favors American. First half numbers and the turnovers so telling because you look at the shooting percentage for American, pretty strong. 43% overall and 6 of 8 from long range with the 10 giveaways, killing the Eagles on the offensive end. Meantime, Lafayette able to feast in the paint, outscoring the Eagles in the painted area 20 to 4. And Nick Linder got to the paint when he wanted to, Chris. I mean, it was at well, and it really. 20 points in the paint, as you said, Jason, for Lafayette, and it's all layups. Here, Linder from the outside, but look at this. Nobody around him, just straight line drives. I think a lot of it having to do with the switching. You're getting the wrong guy on him, but you've got to find a way. Plug and gap something to keep him out of that paint. As good as Linder has been in this game, that's how good Pee Wee Gardner was in the Patriot League final a year ago. He was the tournament most valuable player. 18 points, 4 assists in the championship game at Boston U. He has 4 assists in this game, but 3 turnovers and no points. We're going to win the Patriot League Championship. American hoping it's them, thanks to Pee Wee Gardner. Well, he's initiating action. Again, a little bit passive in that first half. I think Linder's performance may have knocked them back. But he's come out aggressive in his second half. And you see, he's just pushing the basketball to the teeth of the defense. And his penetration creates so much offense for this American team. Stops. And then on the other end, being opportunistic in transition. This guy keeps it up. You see, set just a basketball play right there with a shot fake, one dribble pull up. Here, doesn't take it too far. Nice little mid range pull up. There's so many different ways that this Lafayette team can hurt you. from both teams. A little too many turnovers to the liking of both. But only one in the second half for American. They had those ten in the first half. And it's really stabilized them. And now they're forcing turnovers. Just a sloppy pass right there. A sloppy pass underneath. And then they're losing a handle. And give American credit. They haven't panicked. Pee Wee Gardner has changed the tempo of this game. They're stepping in on the charge. And we talked to Mike Brennan at the shoot-around today. He said, what is the identity of this team? He said, we have no quit. We'll fight to the bitter end. And we're toasting to get into what they want. Get under 10 left on the shot clock. Linder trapped. Damn, trapped. What a spot. Lafayette by four. Gardner for three. Got it! <laughs> what an answer. These two guards have been unbelievable. Three times this year, Gardner hit a buzzer beater to win the game or force overtime. That one makes it a one-point lead for Lafayette. With under a minute left to go here in the Patriot League final.
so many times in big games you see, especially the two starter dominant teams, the front line guys have the big moments, but Zach Roofer, big three, and an enormous rebound. An enormous rebound. Look at this drive from Nick Lindner, though. They've been running that ball screen all night, and look at how he just finds space. He just slashes in there, creates the space, and then look at this rebound. Two-handed rebound from Zach Rufer. Hendricks now at the line. have as balanced uh, a bracket as we possibly can, and that bodes well for trying to put whoever is the worst, if you will, of the two seeds uh, against Kentucky, if at all possible. If the committee can do it, they will. All right, Greg always gives us great insight. He'll be with us throughout the weekend and leading up to the unveiling of the bracket. I want to go back to the first thing that Greg talked about in terms of having more time uh, to evaluate the, the one seeds and two seeds. Is that putting too much emphasis in your judgment on, on one day, one night of basketball, Seth? Well, I think when you get to this time of the year, you're, you're basically splitting hairs. Not that I know much about splitting hairs. <laughs> you have none. <laughs> exactly. But you've got to find reasons why you're going to slide a team up and slide a team down. So what do you do? You take all the information available, and all the information available includes the games that are played this weekend. So I think you've got to take that into consideration. But the, you, by now you have a feel for a team's body of work and just how good a team is. And it goes back to me again, who wouldn't you want to play? All right? And that's how you should see this tournament. Like, who is the best team out there? And when you start doing that, it's Kentucky, Wisconsin, Duke, and now I think Villanova because Virginia's health situation. I think how good you are is really important and that basketball judgment is important. But first, it has to go by accomplishment. Like, who did you beat? And all this stuff, like, the, the, the refrain has been, who did you play, who did you beat? All right, who did you play isn't as important as who did you beat? You know, if you, why don't we just come up with set, uh, set criteria that determines whether you belong in or you don't belong in? You know what I mean? Or this is what the set criteria is for number one seed. I feel like each year we're having different discussions because it's subjective between all the committee members. It changes. Well, I, I don't think the, sub, uh, the subjectivity is bad, actually. I think they have to have some wiggle room to be able to make their own judgments. The complaint I've always had, and I know committee members take this as a slight, and I don't mean it as that, is that when you're asking people to make basketball judgments, they ought to have a basketball background in order to be the best possible, to make the best possible decisions. I think the committee does a terrific job, but it could be a better job. And when, when they have, they've said over the years, boy, having Carol Williams, who's a, a brilliant basketball mind, or Dave Gavitt of one of the great greatest of all time on the committee has been invaluable. Okay, well, if having one of them's on there is invaluable, how about we have ten? That would be great. Let's have ten like that. I think the subjectivity is a great thing for years they talked about in college football. Why can't they be like basketball and have a tournament? Well, there's a 14 tournament there. They pick their teams in largely subjective fashion, using a lot of objective criteria. If you, if you don't have that, I don't need a committee. Give me the best metric you got and spit them out.